what drives me to get up and get going is just to be able to come out, offer a service, you know, we can make a substantial living from and as well provide people with some support, use teachings that I've gathered through the years to help somebody and then to see their general appreciation not just the fact that they're paying a bill, that we've actually done something to impact them and their employees. Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. I'm very excited to have with me my, my old friend, my buddy from high school and, and college there, and we, 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 we piled around there for a while, Mr. Ray Tharp. He is the owner and president at RTM Industrial Maintenance. So welcome, Ray. Hello. How you doing? Oh, man, it's good, man. It, it's late on a Friday. Uh, it's beautiful outside. I just appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy guy, man, to sit down with us, buddy. Um, the pleasure's mine. I appreciate you inviting me to do this. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And these hero conversations, Ray, we love to get them started just by sharing with our listeners a little bit about your journey and to, to where you're at now, man. So what would you like to, to share with us here? I'm a fifth-generation logger sawmiller. I actually grew up in the wood industry. After I decided not to return to college, I went into the saw milling professionally, Mm -hmm. which I spent 15 years actually manufacturing lumber. And that's where I learned the trade, how to work on the equipment, and would be my background that led me to where I'm at today. I wanted more, wanted to try to do my own thing, so I took a leap of faith, created RTM, launched that in January of 2016, and we're a millwright service company, and our services include welding, fabricating, equipment installation, alignments, troubleshooting, pretty much anything in a sawmill we can handle for our customers. And we have seen great, great growth, built an amazing customer base, and we're steadily building. That is awesome, man. So I didn't realize you spent 15 years in, in, in an actual mill. So where was that mill at? It was located in Alberta, Virginia. Okay, cool, man. That's awesome. Yes, and, sir. And you started 2016 for RTM, and what you guys, I think, just by watching you online, looks like are you nationwide? I mean, you're all over the place when I look at it and see the stuff you're posting. Uh, we we're pretty we, we're covering pretty much the East Coast. Uh, okay. We've worked in 50, uh, uh, 15 states now. You know, we that's our customer base for now. We're still steadily going further and further. We we love what we do and we want to help everybody though. Yeah, I thought I saw some recent about you like in New York or something working on a, in a mill. I mean, I was like, man, Ray is all over the place, man. I make some tracks in a, in a year. <laughs> it ain't no doubt. <laughs> Now, how about, you know, when you, you're you serving this, the wood industry and the sawmills, what are you seeing, man, as some of the, the biggest challenges those mills have in the future? Uh, of course, raw material. You know, trees are, they're replanted as they're harvest, harvested. But, uh, I see as far as the, the turnaround on the years, you know, there's such a demand for the product that the, the trees are not as large as they used to be. Uh-huh. So... The mills are having to learn how to handle the smaller log more efficiently okay. to still produce the same amount. Uh, that that's been the that's probably the biggest thing. And, and trying to get the most quality lumber out of that smaller raw product. I got you. I got you, man. Okay. Now, how about the people out there, Ray? That, that maybe we're sitting there, we're talking with some seniors in high school or young folks like that, and we want to give them some advice about pursuing a career. Uh, in the wood products, what what would we tell them, man? What what would you offer up to them? Well, it, it forestry industry has been very good to me. It's a very rewarding job. It's I wouldn't say it's the easiest. It's climate and weather, and, you know, that's a big factor. And I mean, it's it's tough work. But if you put the work in, you will reap the reward. Mm-hmm. And uh, and on top of that, it's always it's a demand for. The demand for forest products is not going to go anywhere, so it's that's substantial. Yeah, no doubt. That demand's doing nothing but going up, man. 
Exactly. And that's that's a job. There's something to be said about job security. Exactly. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Now, what about when you look back, man, you've had a lot of people in your life and you're helping a lot of people. Any mentors stand out to you from the wood industry that you'd like to share about? I'll tell you, I, I've been very fortunate that a lot of the older generation, when I was young and, and coming through the ranks there at the mill, uh -huh. it, you know, I showed that I had a want to learn and to understand and if people took the time to teach me. Mm -hmm. Uh individual that's going to stand out the most my biggest influencer and what got me started and this will be my dad uh -huh. and i you know grew up in it and as soon as i was big enough to be able to go to the woods when he was logging or go to the sawmill when he was running the mill you know i was right there just wanting to be in the middle of it you know he's a he's a partner with me and rtm we started this thing together and we with addition of my cousin and if they, and he was a mentor to me growing up and he's part of rtm and and RTM's got over 100 years of actual manufacturing experience that we bring to the table. It's wow. just with our just our knowledge and know-how. Uh, but I can, it's a lot of individuals that I could credit to my knowledge and what I've learned. Now, and you said, what, you're a fifth generation? Yes, sir. That? That's awesome, man. So it's, it's in your blood, man. Now, how about, you know, people who think about the wood industry, they, they have these perceptions. Any myths out there about it that you like to just knock out the park? Yeah, I think a lot of people get the misconception of what the logger actually does. You know, get blamed mud in the road or where you're stealing a natural resource, that type of thing. And then it, the forestry industry has evolved so much. And I, I kind of refer to it like commercial farming now. They might plant a track of timber in 18 years. They clear cut it. Hey, we're making you two befores, your, your decking boards. And then it's replanted, you know, almost within six to eight months they've replanted it and it's starting to cycle again for the next generation so uh that trying to showcase that in a positive manner we're doing good just because we're not doing corn it, you know it doesn't make the you know, evil people <laughs> that's right that's right i'm with you man i'm with you now how about you know the work you're doing I, I see so much about rtm and stuff you're putting out what makes you the happiest man when, when do you get that sense of joy in the work that you're doing uh success that we come in we supply our customer with the services that they asked for, and they have a general appreciation for what we did, and, and they asked for us. I don't want to do one job. I want the repeat business. It's then the, I feel that I have succeeded. And but you've earned that trust too, right? Yes. That's I mean, it, 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 and the customer, they put a lot of faith and trust in you when you come in and you shut their multi-million dollar operation down and you got to revamp something and you got to get it back up and running as well. It, it's a, it's a lot of faith that, right. that they do. Yeah. That's right, man. How about any cool projects that RTM's done that you look back on and they're like, man, that one was a, a pretty awesome. Any highlights there? Uh, the recent band mill installation that we did this past January, that was a very tough installation due to constraints of the building and the existing footprint of the mill. I mean, we literally, every dimension in there, we were within a half inch of not landing. It. Oh, wow. It, it was that close and that tight. And there was no, absolutely no engineer. It was all done in-house. We, from wow. the laying it out to the digging of the pit, steel design the whole nine yards it was all done in house so that was a uh, kind of an iconic one for me just yeah. because and then we were showcasing some new services a crane business that we started and uh, being able to do the excavation work things like that that's the one i'm probably most excited about and that's the one that i had cobalt digital follow us on yeah you so, know, and to showcase who we are and the new services so i mean you mentioned the crane business so these are new uh, is that like sub businesses that you're starting now too, just because of demand and you're seeing the need for these services are, are increasing? Yeah, we've had, we've been very fortunate through 2020 that we've had a lot of growth. The demand for our services has increased and we are looking for diversification as well. Eventually evolve into a one-stop shop where we can come in and complete a turnkey project. And that's where we're trying to gear towards. We've still got some growing to do. We're slowly getting there. Well, man, you're doing you're doing a great job, man. I just can't say enough about what you're doing, at RTM, and just to see your success, and that speaks about your character and the types of people that you're working with, the trust you're providing, and and 
just the value that you're creating out there in, in the wood industry, man. So good stuff, man. Good stuff. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about you outside of work, man. I'm sure there's not much time outside of work for you. <laughs> so you're laughing. So any hobbies, man, anything you enjoy doing for fun? Oh yeah. I, of course, you know, family, man, I got a young daughter. She's 12. I spend a lot of time with her. Uh, she's, doing travel volleyball now so okay we stay we stay on the go with that and i still like to hunt and fish even though i don't get to do that as much as i want to <laughs> and more or less just taking these spending time with family when i am off uh, right we 95 percent of my time i'm on the road somewhere <laughs> right that's right that's right now you the family is everybody there in virginia yes yes my mother father and sisters we all still live local well, Ray, man, thanks for sharing about your family, man. It sounds like you got a lot going on. Uh, RTM's doing great. How about things you enjoy? Maybe you're, since you are on the road so much, any what do you listen to? Any podcast or or do you ever get a chance to to check out any books around the, the maybe the sawmill industry or anything like that you like to share with our listeners? I I do. I read a lot more than I would say watch anything. Okay. Uh, and it. More or less, I'm keeping up with what the manufacturers are doing, things that are changing in the industry. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I mean, a lot of it is just self-education on things. Because it, it, the, the way technology is being introduced into what people would say is something that's not rocket science is starting to become it because of yeah. the technological advances that are being made, the leaps and bounds of the, the innovation. So yeah, uh, just staying up to speed with that is what I try to read up on. That's cool, man. That's cool. It's hard to stay on top of that stuff because it's changing so fast. Daily in some areas. <laughs> and I tell you what, you when you walk in a sawmill now, you know, I think you mentioned this you know, previously, what used to be a 30, 40 person mill is, so, is a lot fewer people now. And it's because of the innovation and the way the technology has shifted and just the impact that it's made, you know? Yes. And that's some of what's been an increase in demand for like my company. And then being up to date, we're having to diversify with the industry. Right. We're having to, you know, learn and grow as well. And, uh, Cause you certainly don't want to go make a service call and you have no idea what you're looking at. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be tough, wouldn't it? So how about this, man? We like to play a game on the hero episodes you call it the lightning round, man. It's just a bunch of random stuff that I like to throw out just to get to know our guests a little bit more. So if you're willing to play, we'll have some fun with it. Okay, sure. All right, man. How about your, what's your favorite food? I'd have to say steak and potatoes. All right. How about, about your adult beverage? Well, a good cold Bud Light would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. Particularly in the summer in, in Virginia, I bet that, that, that does taste good, buddy. How about uh, favorite sports teams? I'm a New England Patriots fan. Okay. You know, even though my man Brady left, I still won't hold with the Patriots. <laughs> I hear you. I saw the Patriots behind you there, so I figured you'd probably go there, but I did not know that about you, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you always pulled with the Patriots? Oh, yeah. I'm okay. A, I'm a Pats fan back, Curtis Martin and uh, Drew Bledsoe were playing, so. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you, you, de you didn't jump on the bandwagon. Okay. Got no, it. no. That's what everybody gives me a fit about, though. <laughs> I like them when they won't that good. <laughs> okay. Now, how about uh, your favorite music, man? I'm a country music fellow. Country music. Okay. Very good. Very good. How about, well, what's your favorite band then? I gravitated to the Jason Aldean, Luke Combs, that kind of era. I, I like that new beat that they, the vibe that they have going in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. How about somewhere that, uh, that you hadn't been before, man, that you'd like to go one day? I really want to visit Canada in the summertime. And it's sometimes <laughs> just to clarify, uh, you know, I'd, I'd really like to go up there uh, and, and I'm planning on doing that as soon as the restrictions are lifted. So. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt, man. No doubt. And how about maybe the last one, uh, dogs or cats, man? I'm going to say I'm a dog first. All right. There's one, only one right answer and you got it right, brother. So that's good. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, this has been fun, Ray. It's been so good to catch up with you, man. And and we call it Eco Ask Why. We always end up with the why. And it just talks about what people are passionate about, what drives them. So, man, somebody comes up to you and say, hey, Ray, what is your personal why? What would that be, man? What drives me to get up and get going is just to be able to come out 
the offer of service, you know, we can make a substantial living from and as well provide people with some support, use teachings that I've gathered through the years to help somebody and then to see their general appreciation, not just the fact that they're paying a bill, that we've actually done something to impact them and their employees. It's, it's a lot of it's a lot of families, and I may put too much responsibility on myself, but I feel responsible for all my guys and then all the mouths they have to feed. And we look at our customers the same way. Right. We go in there and do something that's detrimental to the meal. It, it doesn't, it might hurt the customer, but it's the employees that are impacted if we were to make a mistake. And you know, we take a lot of pride in satisfying our customers. You're doing a great job of it, Ray, and it's been. Good to catch up. I wish nothing but the best for RTM Industrial Maintenance and all the things you're doing. You know, just thank you so much. And for our listeners out there that want to connect with Ray or, or learn more about RTM, check out the show notes. Uh, all his the links to, to the resources to connect directly with him will be there. I encourage you to, particularly if you're in the, in the, in the wood industry, to check him out. Talk to him because he's a wealth of knowledge. And this, it's been really fun, Ray. So thank you for taking the time and sharing with us today, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, too. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Well, you have a great day. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.